In this video I want to talk about rotoscoping and how I think it can be used successfully in animation. Rotoscoping is the practice of drawing on top of footage or already created material which can make the animation process go a lot faster. Now let's address the elephant in the room. A lot of people will tell you that rotoscoping is a form of cheat or a fraudulent way of animating. But I think a lot of the confusion there comes from the fact that people assume that you draw on top of someone else's material. If you're the owner of the underlying footage then whether you draw on top of it or use it as reference doesn't matter. That is entirely your artistic freedom to explore. But were you to draw on top of someone else's copyrighted material and say that's yours, then of course there's a major problem there. With that out of the way, let's talk about some ways to make rotoscope animation actually look good. It is often quite easy to spot if someone used the method of rotoscoping. You'll often see flickering lines, perhaps overly realistic motion in the characters, and maybe also a higher frame count used than perhaps needed. This will often come from the fact that the artist straight up traced the underlying reference, and this will give a very specific look to it. A look I would personally try to avoid. I've done my fair share of rotoscope animation, and I think I found a few methods that help to eliminate this high refresh rate in the drawings that you get from simply tracing it. So let's dive in. Let's first shoot some quick references that we can use as examples here. I think these will do. Tip number one. If you're drawing over live action footage, remember to still think like a traditional animator and use your illustration skills to its maximum. Use the footage as a very good reference, but don't let it fully direct your drawings. Here, I'm gonna give you two examples. A less desired one, where I completely just follow and draw lines where I see them on my reference. Not a very good look. In this second one, I try to apply a more illustrative style onto the footage below, rather than forcing myself to follow it completely. Let's not just trace it, but actually draw it like we would if we did not have the reference below. Make sure to leave out a lot of what you see. Describe it with as clean lines as possible. You can obviously also push the proportions in the drawing, so your animated character doesn't have to look exactly like the reference actor. Dressing and casting your actor or actress to look as close as possible to your final end product does make things easier. Since we also have to draw several frames to make this move, I would really pay attention to how these lines stay consistent throughout. To achieve this, start by defining one frame like we've done here, and then focus on individual elements as you flick back and forth between the frames. Use the footage below like you would use a rough pass in a normal animation pipeline. It is a good direction for where each element goes, but not one set in stone. You could focus on getting one element animated over a couple of frames before moving on with the rest, or finish one frame at a time. Sometimes I find it easier to narrow in and, for example, get the head done for a couple of frames before doing the same with the body. That might structure the work a bit and give you little milestones to finish. It can be easier than having to draw full frames one after another. Tip number two. By picking out selected keyframes from your underlying footage and letting them inform you of the overall poses of a character, for example, you take away a lot of the in-between noise and distraction that might cause your rotoscope animation to look flickery. Now you've limited the reference to a few key moments. Draw those frames first and then you can in-between the rest of the animation by hand with a more traditional animation approach. This simplification of the reference will allow you to space your frame more deliberately and be less forced to follow the footage below. It's sort of a halfway roto, halfway normal animation approach. Also remember that it is completely okay to hold on frames for longer periods of time. 
you don't want any of these micro movements in this reference that come from me not being able to hold still in your final animation. You might want to add some secondary animation to a hold frame where maybe the hair is waving in the wind or the jacket is flowing nicely perhaps. But I would avoid rotoing that from the reference. You can find a lot more videos and tutorials on my Patreon page, some speaking about this very topic where I show you my full process. And you'll find a link to that here or down below. Tip number three. Something I sometimes like to do is to create a reference in 3D that can aid my drawings. By designing the reference in a way that only the useful information is there and none of the business in detail that live action footage provides, I have an easier time rotoscoping and applying my line work to such a reference. I like this approach specifically for slow movements in characters, head turns, camera orbits and other complex scenes. Instead of me trying to figure out and describing the geometries of these subjects in 3D space, I can follow the reference I created. I can even go back and forth and edit the reference, adding little marks on the 3D model where I might want to add a line. Maybe have a rendered version showing the wireframes, which also gives me cues to how far something moved between the frames. It obviously requires that one first creates the scene in 3D, which also adds to the workload, but I often think the payoff is worth it. I've even used my mocap suit from Rococo just to add some animation onto the 3D characters and save me some time not having to do much animation to them. I think my favorite method of rotoscoping is when I apply it to the 3D assets that I create. You could almost see it as me rendering it with a tune shader from the 3D software. I just happen to do it manually instead. I really don't think rotoscoping should have the amount of negativity tagged to it as it currently has. I think more people than you think use it and successfully blend it into their work, perhaps using some of the methods I showed you here. Hopefully you found this useful and can try out some of these techniques in your own work. Uh, I got some exciting videos coming up, so make sure you subscribe to not miss those. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.